Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. We're here again with uh, our mentor, uh, Hendra, who, uh, if you recall, he's uh, working as a cybersecurity uh, um, specialist at uh, one of the big banks. And we thought we'd do a slightly different topic where we'd want to talk about uh, staying connected with classmates. So in school, in uh, high school, in, in university or whatever, you tend to get close with your classmates, right? You, you spend a lot of time with them. You have uh, classes Monday to Friday with some of them. Some of them are, are just uh, in specific ones. Uh, but then as you graduate and leave, then uh, you kind of separate and then you might make work friends and then you might make a different uh, areas of interest, friends t- type of thing. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, staying connected with with classmates and friends in general. So yeah, uh, Hendra, why don't you start off by, by telling us a little bit about your experience? We'll probably go start in high school. We won't go to elementary school, <laughs> but tell us a little bit about kind of uh, classmates and, and friends in, in high school. And then how did that kind of evolve into like university and onward? Yeah, I can start with my high school. I mean, during my high school years, I did not have, um... I did not have many friends. Basically, I'm just a normal kid, not a troublemaker. I, I, uh, I didn't have anything special. I wasn't good at sport, so people would know me. And pretty much, I, I had a few friends who share common interests, and then we just hang out that way. Uh, what's interesting was at the end of the, before we graduated from high school, of all of a sudden, I guess it's because we were teenagers. We got really close mm-hmm. and, and we lost contact after we graduated, but then technology came into play. So Facebook was, uh, was in the picture mm-hmm. and, then, and then we started finding people through Facebook and then we connected and eventually it became a WhatsApp group. And we stays connected since we has we have stayed connected connected since then. Mm. Uh, nothing much nothing much is going on. We don't talk a lot about professional career or or, or uh, anything serious. Pretty much, it's just a group. We share information and we chat casually. That's all. Yeah, I guess my experience is uh, similar but different. So in, in high school, so I went to an all boys school, right? So uh, I, I was not a popular person by any means or, <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, but I did have some some friends that I stayed connected to. Um, some of them, well, I, I actually none of them went to the same university as me. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, we stayed connected and probably got connected more after uh, university. And actually, we're, we're still in contact where we actually have kind of a monthly gathering where before we would go out and, and have dinner or, or go someplace, do some sort of activity and try to make it a monthly thing, which was even more important when all of us started getting married and having kids and stuff like that. It's kind of an, an excuse to get out of the house. So I've been able to stay pretty pretty close and connected to them. And uh, actually, a couple of us are, are going to start our own podcast just to talk about some, some random topics uh, up, upcoming in the next little while. So hopefully you'll, you'll hear about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so from, from my high school experience, um, I don't know if I was really close to anybody. So I have a bunch of good friends. I don't know if any of them are really like super best friends. Uh, we didn't really get that close. Although with, with a couple of them, I did a, a grad trip. So after we had uh, graduated from um, from university, even though we went to different universities. Uh, we went around Europe <laughs> for a while. And uh, obviously, when, when you do that and travel with a bunch of folks, you, you get pretty pretty close uh, there, right? Um, yeah, and, and then stayed connected. Um, I don't know if it's through social media. It's probably just through like phone and email and stuff like that, a little bit more low tech uh, than, than some. Uh, but we would try to plan uh, kind of an, an annual, like a, a Christmas gathering, uh, something like that. Uh, maybe some... Uh, celebrate some people's birthdays if, if you wanted to invite folks. Um, but, but that's kind of uh, what we ended up doing. Um, how, how was your experience during uh, university? So, so these high school friends, how many of them continued on with you to university? And, and, and uh, what happened to them? Um, and were they replaced <laughs> by, by your <laughs> university friends? I, I, uh, I have a 
Well, since I'm an international student, so after I graduated from uh, my high school, I actually left the country and I moved here to Canada. So when I came here, I pretty much lost all my friends, mm -hmm. uh, all my high school friends. Then I had to uh, I had to build a, a new a new batch, or a new set of friends, which is uh, which is interesting because uh, it language became one of the issues then in uh, in making new friends. Mm -hmm. um, which is a good problem to have because to have because I got to practice uh, you know English at that time which was which uh, which I was uh, I was struggling to begin with and and it's interesting the, that I it, uh, people were quite um, I didn't feel like I, I was I didn't I didn't find it hard to make new friends when I, in my university years. I guess since uh, I, I joined the computer science program and in the computer science program, it was, it happened to, to have a mixed bag of all kinds of people. Like from, I had, uh, uh, almost everyone had, had a different background. So it's interesting and I made some friends that way it's probably because we had to uh it's pretty much you you have the same schedule right you 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 went to the same lecture you right. took the same courses and then you had to do the same assignment so because of uh of the lifestyle i guess and the scheduling you became uh you build a relationship that way mm -hmm. um in as of today i still i'm still in touch with a few of them although it's kind of hard to stay in touch right now because uh, it's been a while and then different people have different priorities and they, and many of them have chosen different career paths, not on, uh, they decided not to stay in IT or mm -hmm. computer science in, in a way. But what's interesting is uh, I learned that from, from the, from those friendship, you can actually learn from what they do today because when you meet again you know you you kind of share your experience and then from that sharing you learn that there's such a uh there are opportunities which you never heard of mm -hmm. how about you i like in in your case in your case do you uh have you found that uh, most uh, all your friends stay in the same industry or, or they kind of move around and and, and chose different career path no it's it's quite varied i would say so uh when i went to universities uh well i didn't move to a different country but uh basically there's no one i really knew uh from from hi high school right so uh, i said i went to an all, all boys school and uh, there's only one girl that I knew that was from the, like the, the all girl school that was down the street, that sort of thing. Right. Um, so I actually didn't make that, that many friends in my program. Uh, I only had like two friends that, that I really had. Right. And, and I could, I, I named them specifically. Uh, I had coffee with one of them a couple of years back and, and the other one I haven't really, uh, kept in touch with. Um, and like university wasn't really that great for me from a friend's perspective. Right. Uh, in my final year, I did make quite a few friends in the badminton club. So that's kind of one of those interest groups where it wasn't directly in, in class, uh, but we've stayed uh, connected, although it's been harder because a lot of them have uh, moved away um, because uh, when, when you graduate um, or when you're in high school, then proximity uh, helps because you, you're all close together. In order to go to high school, you all have to live <laughs> in a certain radius. University changes things because it, it uh, you, you might move away or you might go a little bit farther. Uh, but then once university is over, then then a lot of people start moving out, moving out and completely going elsewhere. Because uh, yeah, I had one of those friends in that group. One's in Vancouver, and one's like um, in in Taiwan and Hong Kong and stuff like that, right? Uh, so it's harder to stay when when time zones aren't even even the same, or, or it's not the same country, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, in all honesty, like I. I sort of keep in touch uh, with them, but probably not as closely as my, my high school batch of friends. 
Um, but what I actually found is that uh, when I started working, so I, I ended up working for like one of the big four consulting firms and, and spent over 12 years there, right? And actually got uh, pretty close with a lot of the people in, in the group there. So we stayed connected. We have uh, a WhatsApp group <laughs> where we uh, stay connected and some people use whatever, Telegram or Signal or whatever. So it's one of those messaging apps, um, but, but we stay connected there. And uh, well, I, pre-COVID, we would, we would try to still connect and, and, and gather, but um, post-COVID it's been, or, or during COVID, it's a little bit more uh, challenging, but I'm sure when things open up, we'll eventually uh, reconnect, but that'll probably be like maybe a once or twice a year thing um, than others. So uh, yeah, like a lot of the the current friends actually for me have been the mainstay of my, my high school uh, and then uh, a little bit on, on the work side, um, very little on, on the university side. And then uh, most of our common like family friends are, are now, um, more on my wife's, uh, my wife's friends, right? But uh, fortunately, or, or, or coincidentally, we had kind of a, a fairly common circle where um, some of my um, work friends were actually went to uh, went to school with her, right? So there's like an overlap and, and a bit of a coincidence there. So we've stayed uh, connected. And, and a lot of that, in, in all honesty, is based on proximity too. For whatever reason, we all ended up moving towards the same area and like uh, a, a bunch of us are within like walking distance of, of each other right and obviously those ones are, are, are closer to it and because we're in the same uh, life stage where we have like kids around the same time it's much easier to stay uh, connected but uh, yeah how, how about yourself so when when you kind of graduated um, did you keep in touch with your friends and then well uh, you, you went to kind of work where you went to school <laughs> right so that's a little bit of an interesting thing as well so how did those friendships kind of stay or, or last and how did you ma maintain those connections uh, yeah yeah so I, I was in a unique position where I, I graduated from the same school that I, I was working with in terms of staying in touch I guess it's this I guess it's the same you uh, I didn't really put any effort after I graduated because you know you graduate you find a job and you just focus on the job and you make new friends right the friends around the professional circle I mean people who work together with you uh, I did that and I made some new friends and typically when you have new friends you tend to uh, you tend to hang out more often with those people than, than friends from uh, your previous life, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. I, um, but there are a few, few friends which uh, I was really close with during my, during my university years, which I, I somehow managed to stay in touch. Mm. Because um, the close one usually reach out when they have events such as weddings or birthdays or... Sure. Uh, or sometimes they, uh, out of the blue, they just reach out to ask some questions about jobs or career, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that's how I stay in touch. I didn't put any effort, other than, um, other than whatever that showed up. If they reach out, that's good. Sometimes I feel like reaching out, and I, I, I did so as well. But I agree with you. I think. Uh, we, I had something in common with respect to the number of friends I had, I had, I had from my university years. Mm -hmm. So in those years, I only had a few close ones and, and not, I can't even remember if, uh, if I had, if I, if I ever had more than 10 friends. Okay. Yeah. So it was, it was a small number and we, we stay in touch until today. So, yeah. so if you can talk about like uh, like after graduation from from university, right? So so now you're working at the university. So some of them uh, you're, you're in touch with, and then you develop kind of this this kind of working friends relationship, hopefully, right? Uh, uh, but but what is that? What does that look like? Is that more of a, yeah, you hang out and have lunch during work, but uh, do you also hang out uh, during the weekends, um, or is it the friends from from undergrad the friends from high school well probably not high school since you, you didn't go to school high school uh yeah uh, school around here but um yeah what what was kind of the the, the dynamics and, and staying uh connected with with kind of the multiple groups of friends uh there okay uh that's a good question and it's interesting one i 
I guess it has to do with um, the stage in in my professional career as well. I was uh, when I just joined the workforce at that time. I just graduated, so that means uh, I I was still rather I was still pretty young, like in a junior position, and and at that time, other than work, my focus was on playing computer games <laughs> and sure. it happened it happened that the same uh work friend we were in the same age group so we we did a lot of that right so right after work we would uh we would either play computer games together or we would uh we would go for dinner and and we would go for a bit of a drink mm -hmm. and <laughs> and then we would go home and then we would play some more games together so <laughs> It was really close. We did not spend a lot of time talking about career growth or anything in the in the in a more of a professional capacity. Right. Pretty much, we walk and we hung out, and then we played some. We played a lot of computer games. Mm -hmm. I guess that is the uh, that is the bonding part that I had. And uh, be uh, to be honest with you, we still in touch until today. And do you still play computer games with each other? I know I don't play computer <laughs> games anymore because some of them eventually, you know, uh, got a life. <laughs> so they have kids, <laughs> they got married, uh, and we stopped playing computer games. Right. Uh, I guess we grew up. <laughs> well, computer games are a huge thing nowadays where esports is kind of one of those budding things where uh, sometimes if, if you actually spend more time, uh, well, not me. I wasn't nearly that good, but there are probably some people who probably could have done well. But uh, yeah, it sounds like that there's some sort of common interest that, that usually helps bond folks to stay connected outside of, of class. Because uh, when you graduate, you, you well, during class, you, you, you have the, the, the lectures, you have the assignments, you have uh, different student clubs or stuff that you might be involved with. Um, but it's, it's up to you to kind of go find an interest. So for you, it's computer games. Uh, for me, it, it was more, uh, actually, it was volleyball was one of them, where uh, there was a lot of overlap where different groups of friends, some of them were the, the high school group, um, some of it were, well, not really the university crowd, but the, the work friends, there was an overlap there. Um, because for, for us at, at work, uh, yeah, there was a lot of, it, it was really work, <laughs> but work did a good job in providing kind of like the um, team building activities and things like that. So, so they kind of uh, maybe spoiled us with a lot of like team, team lunches and team um, dinners and stuff. And we'd have events where I remember doing things like, like ax throwing and like those, um, what are like bubble soccer and like uh, trampoline parks and stuff like that. We, we would do that as, as team building events. So we would go to work and then on, on a Friday or whatever, once a, a quarter or something, we would do one of these interesting things and we would kind of hang out. And then uh, for, for some of us, we, we would actually hang out even non-firm sponsored activities and just go out for dinner and things like that. So there was uh, close knit, some of them closer than, than others. Um, and I wasn't necessarily at the heart of, of, of any of that, but uh, usually it's someone else organizing. But it, it seems to be that there's the, the folks that stay connected is some sort of like common interest group, right? So uh, work obviously um, gets in there. But uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, like the MBA side of it. So, so now you're, you're working with your, um, well, you're working at school <laughs> or you used to go to school and then you decide to, well, you're connected through, through video games and stuff like that. Then you decide to go to your, to your MBA. Um, how, how does that process uh, factor into staying connected with, with folks and friends? Uh, that's a, that's a great question. And it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, it's quite a shift actually, because, uh, at some point, before the uh, MBA, I felt that you know I need uh, I needed to get serious with my with my uh, professional life, mm -hmm. and I've learned a few things, not uh, from from different uh, from various people. One thing that I learned be, uh, before I joined the MBA is the importance of uh, having a professional network, mm -hmm. right? Having a, a network that that can not only help you grow your career, but at the same time um, to give you some, some understanding of, of what's out there. Because I have been living in this bubble. Uh, I call, uh, you know, always uh, everything is IT, everything is a computer. Mm -hmm. So I realized that that's not, uh, the wall is a, a little bit bigger than that or much bigger than that, right? 
and I, I managed to, to, you know, to talk to some people and I started to get, uh, to have interest in what they are doing. And that, that is uh, the reason I decided to, uh, to have, to actually change my lifestyle a little bit, not just playing computer games or just read books at home or just do whatever I love doing, especially anything that, anything that has to do with computer. Mm -hmm. So, so then I joined the MBA and, and what's good about the program, in my opinion, is that it has, it gives a lot of opportunities to, to build, to have a professional, to build your, your professional network. Mm -hmm. So most of the classes is, is, uh, is designed towards a group work. So you get to meet new people from different background. And by doing that sort of work or assignment, you understand different perspective on and where people are coming from and their thought process, which is almost always different from yours. Sure. And I, I learned that. Uh, I guess it, it, I think it helps to grow your, your people skill and your awareness in, uh, in, in, in what you do every day. And I believe that it actually helps to, uh, to make me, to get the, uh, it helps in terms of, of getting things done in a more effective manner at, mm -hmm. uh, at work. Cool. And my, my network, my, 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 prof, uh, my networking, my activities change. So from computer games to, to a group work almost every evening with uh, every, every few uh, different, different group works actually. So I met different people. Right, you have to. That's like kind of uh, required to do so. Uh, and there are other occasions, which they actually there were actually a lot of occasion where you get to attend an event, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a talk or uh, or a professional networking event, just with with uh, with different people in the room or invited to the into into the uh, into the event. You get to share your story, and you get to uh, know what the other people is doing. And I actually took advantage of that. I spent a lot of time going to events, talking to people, and um, and even even going out for a drink mm -hmm. during my during during the MBA program. So so it's a it, I would say it's a hundred eighty degree. Cool. And, and remind me again, were you in a, in a full-time MBA program or was it a part-time? I was were in a part-time MBA time? program. Okay, so yeah. you were working so I had at the to work uh, the daytime. And in the evening, I would either attend classes or, or just uh, or have a group, a group work together or attend a professional networking event or any event for that matter. Right. So it was a busy time. So unlike undergrad, where you went to class, did assignments, and then you had kind of evenings and, and, and weekends uh, to do stuff. Well, you already had your day job, then you had to do uh, this, the MBA work. And then it's probably a bunch of uh, uh, evenings and weekends were taking up doing all that sort of stuff. So you didn't really have that extra time. And, and it sounds like that uh, some of the, um, the, the relationships are are different in the sense of like, when you're an undergrad, like they are your, your classmates, they're your friends. Whereas yeah. like in, in, in um, when you're older and, and I don't know if it's a function of age or, or, or maybe just the, the, the advanced degree, it's uh, they're actually part of your uh, professional network, right? Um, do, do you identify many of them as, as kind of your friends uh, or, or, or is there like a delineation there? I'm just curious. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I never thought of that. Uh, naturally, uh, the way I look at it is, let's say if you uh, in a, um, in the undergraduate program, right? Uh, you, you spend a lot of time with the same people, mm -hmm. right? So you, you pretty much have to say, especially, I'm not sure about other program, but in my, in my program, we almost always had the same schedule, right? The same assignment. So that means you see them all the time, either in the class or in a computer labs. So you build that relationship uh, uh, 
in in uh, in a longer time span, right? First year, second year, and third year, and uh, probably more. But in the MBA program, uh, the uh, you don't you don't get to see the same people, right? If you have if you take two classes, then you'll be meeting two groups. Mm. So I don't think it would give me enough time. It would it wouldn't have enough time to build a a solid relationship, which I I would call this person friends. They are still my friends, but it's more like an acquaintance. Mm. Uh, and yeah so that's that's uh i guess to answer your question uh no they are still friends but it's not as close as my university years you right. my my university friends yeah how about you well i mean i never did an advanced degree so i didn't have oh, okay. that same, <laughs> same experience but uh, I, what i've heard is for those that do kind of uh, the, the full-time mba programs where you have kind of the class and, and pretty much everyone in the same cohort all the time. It's similar to that undergrad where they really become a close knit uh, group of friends. It's challenging when you're doing part time and you have your work, you have all your other life commitments, and then you got to go in and do classes uh, uh, with these other professionals. So it, it's, it's a slightly different uh, relationship. And uh, yeah, so, so for, for me, um, I mean, I, I, I didn't do the advanced degree, but uh, eventually left my kind of long term term job and, and I, I still stay connected with, with those folks. And again, it's, it's occasional, uh, usually big milestones, so like, <laughs> like the weddings or the, the, the birth of babies and stuff of like that. And then maybe a couple of times a year we'll, we'll, we'll hang out um, uh -huh. at, at most. But then it, it becomes now my, my friend circle is more related to family, right? So it's, it's people that are close by, people who have kids that they can have play dates and stuff of like that. So, so the classmates and, and things like that. Uh, although I still have that, that high school group that I, I still uh, connect with. Uh, I know that a lot of folks, they, they don't. It, it, it kind of switches the... Um, the friend circle to, to more related to family and stuff like that, right? So, so what has your experience been kind of post um, uh, MBA now that you're in, like in a, in a new job and, and not uh, in that other one? Like how has uh, the friends circles changed or, or adjusted uh, in, re in response to that? Uh, I, I think I'm still staying in touch with uh, all my MBA friends and, and we ping each other from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few who, who probably, I mean, it's, it's almost the same because they probably they decided to pursue something else after the MBA program, which is, uh, which I, I find it very inspirational as well. <laughs> uh, and in my case, I just, uh, you know, find a different career path and then try to try, try to grow vertically, vertically and see where I can, how, how far I could get. Mm -hmm. Uh, with respect to staying connected, uh, it's the same way, same technology, whatever we have today right. and whatever you are using as well. And I guess the conversation is a little bit different, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, it's more about how hard it is to find a job and how easy it is to find a job or the other way. How, you know, what, what's your plan? It's always, it's, uh, it's very business oriented, I would say. Mm -hmm. Uh, a few occasions we talk about other stuff, but I guess because the, the, the nature of how we met was through uh, a professional degree, right? Mm -hmm. So it was really hard to change the conversation or suddenly switch to a more personal conversation. Although I see, I don't, I, although I know that if, if we spend enough time, then, then we will we'll probably have a more personal conversation. Mm -hmm. And to stay in touch, uh, before the pandemic, it's the same thing. We would get together, uh, try to find an event we, that has uh, that can accommodate a lot of people. For example, the uh, the Christmas market is always a popular one, mm. right? And but during the pandemic, it's uh, it's easy to connect, but you have to put more effort. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, you have to. Uh, set up a zoom meeting like what we are doing now and you have to schedule it and and it becomes harder because the motivation is probably not there in the first place well i i think uh I, i've been connected by a lot of folks who are like 
yearning for that connection. And uh, it, it used to be, you could bump into coworkers, you could bump into classmates, you can bump into whatever, but there's no bumping happening <laughs> with social distancing and all that. So to your point, you, you do have to stay more, more proactive, right? And, and you're right. So the, the motivation um, might not have, have been there, but it's like, if that person's there, I, I might as well talk to them. I might as well grab a coffee with them. I might as well have lunch with them. But uh, when, when everyone's separate and, and you're not supposed to see every anyone, you're supposed to bubble up, uh, then it makes the, the proactivity that much more important for folks. So um, some of the suggestions that I give for, for folks is actually uh, allocate time, right? So uh, Friday afternoons or Monday mornings tend to be the, the, the hot ones, or you can do midweek on Wednesday, but basically allocate a, an hour or two or whatever and, and start pinging people, reconnecting with folks and, and just saying hi to say, okay, who, who did I hang out with in the past? Uh, a simple thing that I recommend is, is go to your text messages uh, scroll all the way down and message uh, the, the oldest person that's there, right? And because you only really text the people that you that you sort of know, right? Um, so it's just like, hey, what are they up to? And if it's uh, uh, four months ago or four years ago, just, just say, hey, I was thinking about you. How are, how are things? Give them an update. And and some for some people, they'll ignore you, right? They, they're like, who, who's this person? I, I, I know number. I'm not sure who they are. Um, but then you can clarify that and, and hopefully you rekindle that. And some people are just like, oh my gosh, yeah, I've been meaning to connect with you for such a long time. I've just been busy yeah. and, 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 and all that. And then sometimes it fizzles out shortly after and sometimes it actually rekindles things, right? Uh, yeah. And then you can do that in any social media. So LinkedIn is a great one where I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to say, okay, yeah, I, I haven't connected with this person one of the things that I've been doing is that when I have a conversation with someone and I feel that uh, I've connected with them, I look at all of the LinkedIn common connections that I have with that person that I was just speaking to and try to message anyone that I haven't spoken to in, in at least like four or six months, right? Because if, if they're in part of my network, I might as well know them, right? And, and uh, you might as well uh, connect. And then you can do the same thing for, um, for things like Instagram and Facebook. Now they don't have the same functionality where it's like common connections and all that sort of stuff. But uh, you could potentially be reminded and, and they're good with providing updates and statuses and stuff of like that where uh, you, you might connect with folks. So, yeah, and, and, and taking that time out where you can block off time for Zoom calls. Uh, one person I was just chatting with was saying, you know what, we'll do a, a lunch meeting uh, and, and it's a Zoom lunch meeting where uh, normally you'd go out and go to the, the, the food court downstairs or somewhere and you'd connect with someone. Well, why not just grab your, your, your plate or whatever it is and, and eat in front. And instead of taking uh, like a full hour, it might be just a half an hour conversation, uh, but, but eat with someone. And, and a, a lot of people, uh, initially they think that's weird, but then when they do it once, it's like, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> and they, they keep doing it because it helps people to stay connected. So those are some of the things that I encourage folks to do and stay connected, especially in, in this, this pandemic world, uh, but really being proactive and, and kind of thinking through who are those people that you really want to, uh, stay connected to you. Who are you curious about? And then sometimes it's getting the uh, information from others, right? Like you remember so-and-so in our class, like whatever happened to him? And, and sometimes the friends that you're connected with stay in, in contact with that person and then you get updates uh, through them. So, so those are some of the suggestions I'd have, but what about yourself? Any, any sort of thoughts that you would have in order to stay connected with folks? Um, I, I think you, you, have, uh, you have a lot of good suggestions, Luki. I'm, I'm going to take some notes and I'm going to do it. <laughs> and okay. from my from my side i i would like to add for example um for for those who who are close to you or but you, you have lost contact i think you sort of have some idea about what they like right because i have i have a friend from uh from uh one of the big four consulting firm for example uh, uh we used to to talk a lot when he was a he actually had a project at a place uh, at a place where I worked before. Mm -hmm. Then, and then we lost contact because the project was over. But I I I know that he loves coffee, right? <laughs> so, so when when I saw uh, a, a a great article about coffee, uh, there's a sale. Then I would ping him and say, "Hey, this is probably something you probably like this, for example, mm -hmm. right? In, in, in a sense, you don't really have to have any topic to talk about, but because you know that he has certain interests and that would be, that's a good way to stay connected mm -hmm. in a way, right? So, so he still remembers you and it shows that, you know, you still remember them in a way. And, and it's not that hard to actually just copy and paste a URL 
uh, <laughs> a link about coffee, right? Yeah. So that's I mean, what I do, and uh, it's it's uh, so far it, it has worked well for me. I think that's a great idea. So one of the things that I recommend folks to do is is what I call it was something similar to that, but it's what I call a, a value brainstorm. Right. Okay. And, and basically what that is, is in one of two ways where you're trying to add value to someone. So the first way is to think about something that added value to you in the past uh, month, week, day, uh, just now that it's like, oh, my gosh, this app that I downloaded, this blog post, this video that I watched, this podcast I just listened to was so amazing. So with with that, think of one, two, three, ten people that you think this would add value to. But instead of doing a mass uh, social media post to everybody, uh, send a specific note. Hey, Hendra, I remember your last conversation about blah, 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 blah. I thought you, you'd like this, right? Um, and, and with another person, again, make it specific to them on, on the conversation. Those messages could be very similar, right? But uh, yeah, connect with them. The, the other aspect of the value brainstorm is uh, that's on, on something that helped you. But if you want to specifically stay connected with someone, go remember them and just spend like five minutes thinking about how could I help them, right? What are some things that they would be interested in that if, if we talk about coffee or video games or we talk about uh, a vacation or this and that, go and find something and, and, and share it with them. Uh, and then it's, it's a great way to, to reconnect and, and, and keep the, the connection going. Um, so that it's not like you're only talking to them when you need a job <laughs> or when you need promotion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like that. um, yeah, so th that's another uh, recommendation that I encourage folks to do. But uh, I, I think we had a lot of good conversations. I went through our story about like uh, staying with different friend groups over the years and, and yeah. some, some ideas for folks to uh, stay connected. Um, so I think that's good information. So are there any last parting thoughts that you'd want to share with, uh, with the audience? Uh um let me think i guess i guess the uh something that i uh, the takeaway if there's any is that i mean it's important to stay connected mm -hmm. right but at the same time it requires effort mm -hmm. and and certainly the tips that you just share with me and and some of mine uh is free so they can use it and then right. And I guess if they can let us know which one they love best, uh, the one that works or the one that, that the ones that don't work, uh, I mean, yeah, it would be it would be good to know. But but if uh, if there is anything else, I guess I think it it would be good to stay connected with whoever, whether it's a professional networking friend, oh, I mean professional friend or high school friend or university friends or any friends, right? you never know what what value they can bring and to your point i really like the fact that you know we should we should provide value first before we even ask for it yeah, yeah. I, I i'm a huge believer of, of uh, karma in the sense of that the more you give the more you receive uh, and and i usually start with giving first and then hoping to receive and uh that that expression for networking i really like because it's you never know Right. Sometimes uh, reconnecting with that person from high school or whatever, they, they might be totally uh, dismissive <laughs> and not want to reach out. Or they might be like, oh, my gosh, this this is the best uh, connection. And, and I'm so glad that we rekindled it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for, for sharing your, your insights on uh, staying connected uh, with, with classmates and in friends uh, as you transition into the queer world. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have you back on a future episode. Thank you. Likewise. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.